we're starting a new series called Faith Towards God. It is uh, one of the foundation doctrines of the six foundation doctrines that's taught us in the book of Hebrews. And uh, we're going to have a look at that particular doctrine and certain aspects of it today. The, the, the main question we're going to ask today is, what is faith? And uh, there's two aspects we're going to look at, and that is the fact that everybody has faith. There is uh, faith given to every single person on, on this earth. Um, but not everybody has faith toward God. And that is uh, two of the areas we're going to look at with regards to this particular doctrine today. But let's open up in the scriptures as we have done in the past when it comes to dealing with the foundational doctrines. And the first scripture we'll look at is in Hebrews chapter 5, beginning at verse 12, and then we'll go on to Hebrews chapter 6 as well. And the scripture says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And then in Hebrews chapter 6, beginning at verse 1, um, the writer goes on to say, Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God and of the doctrine of baptisms, of the laying on of hands, and of the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And so we see that there are six foundational doctrines uh, to the Christian faith in everybody. Um, because so there are foundational doctrines and uh, uh, the Holy Spirit in this, these passages of Scripture refers to them as the milk of the Word. Um, it's vital that every single believer, when they come into the kingdom of God, is taught these doctrines and has a clear understanding of these doctrines. Because as you uh, grow in your walk with the Lord, if you have a, sh a sure foundation, um, your, your um, walk in the Lord it will be that much stronger. Um, you will be able to, as you uh, hear various teachings um, through your, your, your Christian walk, you'll be able to relate them to your foundational teachings that you have been taught. And Anything that deviates from that which you've been taught in the foundation doctrines, you can it'll straight away r register a red light and then a warning bell to you. Hey, wait a minute, this is not lining up with that which is foundational to the Christian faith. And because you have a clear understanding of the foundation doctrines, um, all teachings that you encounter thereafter, you will be able to almost benchmark them against these foundational doctrines because everything will have to still stay in line with the foundation. You cannot build outside of the foundation. You build onto the foundation and you, and, you, and you grow in the things of God, but you can never build outside of that. And so it's very important for believers to have this sure foundation and a clear understanding of these six uh, doctrines. But even when you become mature in the Lord, it is important for us as, as uh, mature believers to continue to revisit these doctrines so that we um, are able to, to maintain uh, a strong foundation in our walk with God. Um, if you think about it in the natural. The Bible talks about the fact that these doctrines are the milk of God's Word. Um, obviously, when you move on to the solid food of God's Word, that, that's a, a different uh, part of the diet that, that the body takes uh, in the, in the natural that the body takes on board. But even in the natural, um, mature people still drink milk as part of their diet. And so it is important, even as mature believers, that we still partake of these uh, foundational doctrines and, and meditate upon them and listen to them and, and study them to make sure that uh, our foundations remain sure. And so they are the six foundation doctrines that are, are mentioned in this portion of Scripture. And that is... Um, repentance from dead works, faith toward God, doctrine of baptisms, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. Um, but I want to look at another scripture in line with these doctrines just to highlight a point 
um, which is very important for us to realize. And let's just have a look at the scripture in Acts chapter 20, beginning at verse 18. Um, <clears throat> the background here is that Paul is on his way to Jerusalem, and he's seen the church, uh, he's not seen the church at Ephesus, he's seen the elders of the church at Ephesus for the very last time, before he, uh, he will never see them again until such a time as they, they join him uh, when he gets uh, to heaven. Because after this point in time, Paul goes on and he never returns to Ephesus uh, to preach the gospel. Um, and so what he does is on the way, he doesn't want to stop off at Ephesus. He wants, because it's going to just uh, hinder him on his journey to Jerusalem. So he stops, stops off uh, on the way, I think it was Miletus that he stopped off at. And he calls the elders of Ephesus to come down and meet him there. And he then now uh, is ministering to the elders of that particular church. And he's admonishing them for the very last time. So the words that he's speaking to them are very important because Paul knows uh, that he's never going to be able to minister to them again in the flesh while he's on this earth. And so he wants to leave them with some uh, sound doctrine, some sound advice and uh this is part of what he said. We're not going to look at everything, but we just want to touch on part of what he said in relation to the fact that we're dealing with these foundational doctrines. And so beginning in verse 18, the scripture says, And when they had come to him, he said to them, You know from the, uh, the first day that I came to Asia, in what manner I always lived among you, serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears and trials, which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews. How I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you, and taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying to Jews and also to Greeks. Now, this is the important part that I want to uh, focus in on with regards to this teaching this afternoon. Um, verse 21 again. Testifying to Jews and also to Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And so... Paul taught extensively on these two particular doctrines. Now, we've just gone through in Hebrews, and we saw that there are six foundational doctrines to the body of Christ, of which these, are, these two form part of those six doctrines. Now, Paul called it a, referred to um, repentance from dead works. In, his, in, in the book of Hebrews, it's called, the doctrine is called repentance from dead works. Paul refers to it here as repentance toward God. It's the same doctrine, just a slightly different terminology that's used. Because when uh, you study the doctrine of rep repentance from dead works, obviously you're going to repent towards uh, God. And that's what uh, Paul is mentioning. He say, he, so he mentions the doctrine of repentance toward God, which is repentance from dead works. And then he mentions the doctrine of faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. So in the book of Hebrews, it's called faith toward God. Uh, Paul just says it's faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ. Exactly the same doctrine, just slightly different terminologies. But the point that I wanted to bring across here is the fact that these are the two doctrines that Paul taught most extensively on when he taught the churches um, uh, in his ministry. And so although he taught on all six foundational doctrines, um, these were the ones that he concentrated on most, mostly, um, repentance from dead works and faith toward God. The, the reason for that really is because these two doctrines are the doctrines whereby we, we live our daily Christian walk. Um, because you cannot live your daily Christian walk unless you're walk, walking in repentance toward God. You, you're repenting from dead works. You're no, long, no longer walking in that. And you cannot do the Christian walk unless you're doing it by faith. For the just shall live by faith. And so these are the two that um, Paul taught on more extensively than, than the others. Um, so to bring that into the, the whole uh, concept of the Christian teaching, here we have, you have six foundational doctrines, and these are the doctrines that every believer should understand clearly. Um, and then you build on top of that with everything else that, that you learn in your Christian walk as you go with the Lord. But of the two, the two the, um, cornerstones, so to speak, of the foundation doctrines that we should have clear understanding of is repentance from, uh, from dead works and faith toward God. And so we're looking at the second 
in this series of teachings, we're looking at the second of the foundational doctrines, and that is obviously the, the, the doctrine of faith toward God. And in this um, particular teaching today, we're looking at the, the question of what is faith? Um, what is it all about? And uh, we're looking at the fact that there are, we're looking at two aspects of faith today. And they're, they're, over the, this next series of teachings, we'll look at faith in a lot more detail. Um, but to start us off, we're going to look at the fact that everybody does have faith, um, believer and unbeliever alike. And that's we'll, we'll explain that point as we go through the teaching. And then secondly, we're going to look at the fact that not everyone has faith toward God. Um, and so before we go any further, let's look at a couple of scriptures and then I'm going to comment on them. Um, so the, the first section we want to look at is the fact that everyone uh, on the planet does have faith. And the scripture that we'll look at is two. The first scripture we'll look at is in Mark chapter 9, uh, in verse 42. And the scripture says, But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him if a millstone, millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. Now that's our Lord speaking. Um, and he's teaching the disciples. Um, and he's teaching uh, about uh, sin, putting sin in the way of, of, of little ones. And for he says it's better for somebody uh, who, who would cause one of these little ones to stumble uh, if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. Um, and so the Lord is just, from that point of view, just showing us just how, how close little ones are to his heart. And uh, he does not take kindly to anybody who would mislead any um, children uh, who are growing up in the things of God. But the, the first part of that um, comment that the Lord made, he says this, he says, But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble... And so our Lord is telling us that it is natural for children to believe in God. And the reason that they can believe in God is because God has placed that, that, that faith is given to them as a gift from God, right from birth. Every single person that comes into the earth uh, has received faith from God. And that faith is naturally inclined to believe in Him. For our Lord is very plain. He says... Uh, whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble. And so all little ones do believe in God. Now, they might not be exposed to, to the Lord, and they might not be exposed to uh, God from that point, but they have this natural inbuilt faith in them that causes them to believe in God. And that is something that our Lord revealed to us when he was on the earth. And then we'll look at another scripture, Luke chapter 8, verse 25. Uh, our Lord speaking to his disciples, um, and he says, to, but it, Scripture says, but he said to them, where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled, saying to one another, who can this be? For he commands even the winds and the water to obey him. And so in context, you know, if you remember the, the, the story, what actually transpired is that they were on the boat and they were going across the, the uh, Lake of Galilee. Our Lord fell asleep in the stern of the boat. And a great storm arose, and the, and the, the storm was almost, was, well, the boat was starting to sink. They wake up the Lord. They say, Lord, don't you even care that we, you know, we're about to sink and perish? Our Lord gets up, and our Lord rebukes the wind, and our Lord calms the sea. After he does that, he says to them, where is your faith? And so our Lord's not teasing them. He's not saying, you know, look, I've got faith. Where's yours? Um, he's asking them a genuine question. Where is your faith? Now, the reason that the, the Lord asks them that question is because he knows that they do have faith, for he created them with that faith. And he knows that every single person on the planet has got faith. Um, and so one of the reasons why the doctrine is not called the doctrine of faith, because uh, the, the doctrine is called faith toward God. And the reason that the doctrine is called faith toward God and not just the doctrine of faith is because everybody on the planet does have faith. But not everybody has faith toward God. There is a difference between the two. And we're going to uh, get an, a clear understanding of that as we go through it. But uh, the point is, is that our Lord um, knows that we have faith. He asks the disciples, where's your faith? Um, because I've, I've given you faith, I, you know, I created you. 
man is created in God's image, and God is a God of faith. The Bible says that, uh, the Bible teaches us that God calls those things that be not as though they are. He, he, he gives life to, the, to that which is dead. And so God is a God of faith. He creates things by his faith. And God has given man the God-given ability to believe. We, each one of us, everybody on, every on, one on the planet, um, has the ability to believe, for God has given us that, that ability. And God's also given us the ability to believe in Him. Remember what our Lord said, if you cause one of these little ones to stumble, who believe in me? And so all uh, uh, children coming into the earth believe in God, and they had that ability, that, that inbuilt, uh, God-given ability to believe, because we've been created in the image of God, and God is a God of faith. And if you recall, when our Lord walked the earth, um, He healed multitudes. And many times when our Lord healed somebody, or, or someone was healed through His ministry, He would say to that person, your faith has healed you. And so it, it very clearly it was their faith that caused them to receive healing from God. So where did they get that faith? They got that faith from God. God it, faith is a God-given gift given to everybody on the planet um, by God. And so we see that the people that were healed under Jesus' ministry were not what we would term as believers. Um, they were what the scripture would call unbelievers. Um, so how is it possible that an unbeliever has faith to be healed? The reason is because the, the, the Bible differentiates between um, a believer and unbeliever from the point of view of the one who is able to believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That is called a, that is a person who is called a believer in the, in, the, in the scriptures. An unbeliever is one who does not believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And so they are unbelievers. However, even unbelievers still believe. Uh, they, they just believe the wrong thing, but they still believe. People believe. People have, have an, this God-given faith that is given to them. And that is how it was possible that people will be, were able to be healed under Jesus' ministry. And obviously people are healed today as they go through uh, um, to, to healing uh, revival meetings and unbelievers get healed. Um, still today, I mean, because their natural faith is there. It. It's it's not it, it, they're not they're not really the right term, but it's almost like a natural faith. But it's it's God given, and it's the ability God has placed that ability within each person on the planet to believe. Everybody has the capacity to to exercise faith, but um, the difference is is that not everybody has the capacity to exercise faith in God. Um, and that's where the scripture, the Bible differentiates between a believer and an unbeliever. But both believer and unbeliever still have faith and both can exercise their faith. And uh, the unbelievers uh, certainly are able to exercise faith and some are even able to exercise great faith. Uh, you recall that Syrophoenician woman who came to the Lord for uh, her daughter to be delivered from a demonic uh, position. Um, when our Lord did eventually uh, give in to her and allow her to be uh, her daughter be to be healed, He said, "Because you're great faith, you know, you had great faith, and uh, that's what uh, caused God to move on her behalf, because it was outside of the will of God for God uh, for the Lord to minister to a Gentile in in His earthly ministry." And the other uh, count of great faith was the, the the centurion, and he was also a Gentile. Um, and our Lord said, because he could believe God purely by his word. He didn't need the Lord to lay hands on his um, servant, I think it was. And our Lord said, you know, such great faith I've not even seen in Israel. And so the people that had great faith um, who were not believers, not Christians. And so you, are, you don't have to be a Christian in order to have faith because everybody does have faith. However... This world is designed to destroy faith in God. Uh, remember, the doctrine is faith toward God. And so what, Satan is the God of this world, and he knows uh, how to prevent people from 
growing in the things of God. And one of the things that, well, the primary thing he does is that he destroys faith in God. And he knows that uh, every, every child born into the earth does have faith. So what he does is that he, um, in, he's called the God of this world. So everybody on the planet who is not a believer falls under the, the control of Satan to a, a greater or lesser degree. You know, whether you, you want to uh, accept that or not, that's the, the, the truth of the matter. Um, every single unbeliever on the planet is under Satan's kingdom. He is their God and he controls them to a greater or lesser degree depending on their lifestyle, etc., etc. But the whole world system is definitely under his con control. And so what he does is he, he, he gears the world system um, to destroying faith toward God because he knows that every child that comes into the earth has that God-given ability to believe in God. So what he does is he distorts that and he tries to um, erode that faith in God so that uh, they will not exercise their faith in God. So what does he do? Well, when a child is growing up, there's very few children in the earth uh, today and uh, over the years gone by who, as they grow up, are taught to have faith in God. You don't have many parents teaching their children to exercise their faith in God so that God will answer their prayers so that they can uh, see the miraculous power of God in their lives, even as little ones. Um, because but God is able to do that, and He wants to do that. But parents don't encourage that because they don't quite understand that, and so that is never encouraged. But not only that, you, you would think about the fact of what um, children are taught. Uh, children are taught all sorts of fables as they're growing up. Uh, think about the Tooth Fairy. Think about the Easter Bunny. Think about Santa Claus, Father Christmas. Uh, that's all in the Western side, but in the Eastern cultures, there would obviously be other things as well. But all through the child's growing up, they're taught because now children have natural faith. They, they will believe what their parents tell them. They do not, I'm talking about little children now, they do not question their parents. Um, you know, uh, this is what you're telling me now sounds kind of weird, so I, I think I'll pass up on that. No, they believe if, if, if mom and dad says this is the case, then that is the case. They believe it. They go out and act on it. They tell their friends about it when they get to nursery school, whatever it is. And so they believe in, they get told there is a Santa Claus, there is a Father Christmas. They believe it. Um, and they get told about Jesus and they get told about the stories in the Bible and they believe those too. Okay, but now they, 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 their belief system is, is kind of diversified in that they've got God they believe in, in because mom and dad have told them, dad and mom have told them about God and they believe in, in Jesus, but they, mom and dad also told them about Santa Claus and they believe in, in Father Christmas. As they grow up, they get to the point that, wait a minute, Father Christmas is not real, okay? Um, and the Easter Bunny is not real and the Tooth Fairy is not real. And so all of that that they've grown up believing, when they get to a certain age, they realize that's not real. They then also now begin to question, well, you know, is all that I've read in the Bible and heard about these stories, is that real? Because how, why would you have taught me, you know, you've taught me equally, you've taught me God is real and you've taught me Father Christmas comes through down the chimney. Um, and now I find out he doesn't come down the chimney, there is no such person. So why would I want to believe now this uh, about Jesus and that? And so uh, the point is, is that the whole world system is designed to erode faith in God. Um, and there's a lot of pressure on that because, I mean, you, you think about uh, just uh, Christmas time. Um, a lot of pressure on parents to, to partake in that because the world really goes for it. And so, you know, you, 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 you have Christmas trees and all that kind of stuff. And it's very difficult to teach it a young child. I'm talking about a very small young child now. That we, we're having this Father Christmas and this Christmas trees, but it actually doesn't mean, there's no, 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 it's not real. Uh, what we do is we believe in Jesus. And that, but they see the Christmas tree, they see this, and then they see their friends at school, and their friends are talking about Father Christmas. So in their little minds, they still are linking it all up. 
They're very difficult in this world because this world is geared up to um, destroy faith in God. And uh, our Lord said, you know, the guys that do that um, are going to go through a torrid time on, on their day of judgment because our Lord takes it very seriously as to how we input into the lives of, of the little ones. And so the majority of people, as they grow up um, and get older, they then don't exercise faith at all because they've not been taught to, to grow their faith in God. They're taught to, to believe in a whole bunch of things and a whole lot of the stuff they find out is not real. And so their faith is really eroded away. And when they become mature adults, they almost have no faith. The, the faith is still there, but they don't exercise. They don't walk in faith anymore because they don't really believe in it. Um, and our Lord, when he walked this earth, one of the comments he made, he said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation. You remember when the, 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 his disciples couldn't cast out that demon, that, that, that young man who was an epileptic. And our, our Lord uh, cast out the demon. But he, he, he made the comment at that time. He said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Um, and so the Lord refers to a generation that doesn't exercise faith as being perverse. Because that's not how God created uh, man to be. Man is meant to be created in his image. God is a God of faith. And man is meant to walk in faith. And God has actually given him that ability to walk in faith. However, there are those who do learn to exercise their faith. Uh, because they get taught to exercise their faith. But they don't get taught to exercise their faith in God. They get taught to exercise their faith in themselves. And they get taught to believe in themselves. And they get taught to believe in all sorts of things other than God. Um, they get taught to believe in uh, science. Science is going to give us the answer for everything. The medical profession. The medical profession will uh, solve all of the sicknesses that are known to man. They'll, they get taught to believe in um, political leaders. This, these poli this political uh, party will solve our, our country's problems. This particular uh, political leader will solve the world's problems, whatever it might be. And so they get taught to believe in certain things. And primarily, they get taught to believe in themselves. Now, in and of itself, to believe in yourself is not a bad thing because faith works, okay? And this is how you can also see that there are certain people out there that just seem to be able to excel far more than others. And one of the reasons for that is, is because they've been taught to actually believe in themselves. And that is faith. And faith works. God, it's a God-given uh, gift and that it will work. But it's, it's limited in what it can do because they get taught to believe in themselves. And by believing in yourself, you're limited to what you can perform, what you can do. But what it will do is it will bring out the best in yourself. Let's think about a, a, an athlete, okay? Um, an athlete who is going to excel in their sport can only do so if they really believe in themselves that they can excel in this particular sport. And the way that that happens is right from, they have a, obviously a natural talent that, that gets picked up by the parents and, 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 the, and their school uh, teachers and that. Um, and then that gets encouraged. Now, how does it get in, encouraged? Remember the scripture says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, in the natural, faith comes by hearing and hearing you can do it. And that is what they hear. They hear, you've got this talent. You can develop. You can uh, excel in this particular sport. If you really want to uh, apply yourself to it, you will excel. And they hear that, and they, they start to believe that. And as they do, they start to bring out the best in themselves, the natural ability. It really, they really begin to excel. Even in the, in the, in the, the mental realm, uh, people who excel um, in, in, in um, me their mental abilities. They also believe they can do it and they are able to exercise that faith. It brings out the best in them naturally. And so that faith is working. It's just not working toward God because they're not exercising their faith toward God. And one of the problems about 
using your faith to believe in your own ability and your ability to, to create wealth for argument's sake and your ability to excel in your sport is that it's limited to that which can be done in the natural. You are not able to exercise faith in the supernatural power of God because you're not exercising your faith toward God. And so the point is very uh, clear that everybody on the planet has faith. They've been given that faith by God. Um, some develop their faith in, in natural, the natural abilities. Um, some just you know, give up on faith and they just you know, go through life from one day to the next and uh, don't believe very much. Um, but that faith is always there to begin with. And right from the start, God has given everybody faith and everybody has the ability to believe in him, but uh, not everybody exercises that faith. And so we come to the second part of what I wanted to talk about today is that the fact is not everybody has faith in God. Okay, um, let's have a look at a couple of scriptures and then I'm going to comment on them. The first scripture we'll look at is in John chapter 8, beginning at verse 43. And the scripture says, why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. This is our Lord speaking, and he's speaking to a whole lot of people that are around him at the time, uh, mainly the Pharisees and, and, and uh, the scribes and that. And he was saying, why can't you guys understand what I'm saying? And then he answers the question. He says, you're not able to, to listen to my word because you are of your father, the devil. And uh, I mentioned it earlier that everybody on the, on the planet uh, is under the control of the God of this world who is an unbeliever. And Jesus is just uh, uh, reinforcing that. He's saying that you guys are, are of the devil. And that is the reason why you can't understand what I'm saying. So our Lord, quite often, I mean, he spoke to them in parables. But there were many times that he spoke quite plainly to them. And yet they still couldn't understand what he was saying. And Jesus said, why can't you understand what I'm saying? Well, uh, the reason you can't is because you're of your father, the devil. And that's the reason you cannot understand what I'm saying. And let's have a look at the second scripture. And it says, this is also in John's gospel, John chapter 12, beginning at verse 39. And the scripture says, therefore, they could not believe. Now, this is very important that we get an uh, understanding of this particular scripture. Therefore, they could not believe because Isaiah said again, he has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they should see with their eyes, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. And so we see here that although everybody has got faith, not everybody has faith toward God. Now, the scripture says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So here we got our Lord Jesus, the Lord, the word of God himself manifested in the flesh, speaking to people. And if faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, these people are sitting right in front of the word of God, listening to the word of God. And so clearly... Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the Word of God is not all that it is. It is. There's more to it than just hearing. Because here they are in front of the Lord, in front of the Word of God Himself. He is speaking to them. They're hearing Him, but they're not having any... It's not impacting on their faith at all. Okay, so there's more to it than just hearing. And the more to it is in the understanding. Um... When our Lord taught on the, the parable of the sower, uh, you recall those who were the seed that fell by the wayside were those who did not understand the word of God. <clears throat> so the word was preached to them, but they didn't understand it. And then the Lord uh, elaborates on that. And he said, the, the ones who do not understand, Satan comes immediately and takes a word that was sown in their hearts out of their hearts, lest they believe and are saved. 
And so in order to prevent them from exercising their faith in that word, Satan removes that faith from their hearts. Now, how is he able to do that? The key one that our Lord said is, the ones who do not understand, uh, Satan can then take that word out of their hearts because they didn't understand what was said. And exactly, that, our Lord was saying exactly the same thing. He said, you can't understand it. And the reason that they can't understand, so the, the, it's not just hearing the word of God, it's hearing with understanding. Because once you understand the word of God, then you can exercise your faith in the word of God. If you don't understand it, you can't, you can't attach your faith to it because it just doesn't make sense to you. And so you can't believe it. It, it. It's impossible. You can only believe that which you understand. And Satan understands that principle. And so Satan, the Bible talks about the fact, he blinds their minds. He blinds the eye, their eyes. We just read the scripture. He blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts. Now it's referring to the Lord as well, but the Lord, the Lord uses Satan in this area. Um, why does the Lord do that? Well, this is touching on, on, a, on a, a bit of a, uh, a controversial doctrine that people don't always understand. And that is that there is such a thing as predestination. Remember our Lord said to the disciples, you guys didn't choose me, I chose you. Um, God chooses. God, uh, in speaking to, to, to um, Pharaoh, the Lord said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. And uh, the book of Romans teaches us this very plainly. It is God who decides, for he is God. And he always, he, he, God chooses based on his foreknowledge. The Bible says, for those whom he foreknew, then he also uh, predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. And so God knows everything. And from eternity, God knows. And so God knows those whom he has chosen to come into the kingdom of God. And so what God does, because everybody has faith, the, the way, if, if everybody has faith and everybody understood the gospel, everybody would give their hearts to the Lord because nobody in their right mind will choose hell over heaven, okay? So if they truly understand the gospel, They've got their faith, they're going to exercise their faith, and they're going to believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But something blocks that. Something stops them from believing the gospel, and it's their understanding. Their, their, their eyes are blinded, their understanding is hard. They, they cannot understand. Let's go back and read um, John uh, verse, uh, chapter 12 again. He says, Therefore they could not believe. So they, this is what prevented them from believing. The faith was there. They could have believed if they understood. Therefore, they could not believe, because as I said again, he has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest, in other words, just in case, they should see with their eyes, lest they should understand with their hearts, turn, so I should heal them. Why would, they, why would the Lord heal them? Because they would then believe. And the Lord's, the, the, the only criteria to come into the kingdom, you've got to believe. If you believe, you get healed. Uh, if you, you get born again. And so the thing that prevents the unbeliever from exercising their faith in the gospel is the fact that their eyes are blinded, their hearts are hardened. They cannot see the light of the gospel. They cannot see the truth of the gospel. And because they cannot see it and they don't understand it, they cannot exercise their faith in it. And because they don't exercise their faith in it, they don't get born again. But so the point is, is that everybody does have faith. And the only thing that prevents people from exercising their faith to be saved is a lack of understanding in the gospel. And so that is why this, the doctrine is called faith toward God. Because only those whom the Lord, because it's in Christ that the veil is taken away. And when we, um, hear, when, when those who are called hear the gospel preached, the Lord opens our understanding that we can understand, okay, the gospel is true, Jesus is, is real, I believe. And so the moment you do that, you're born again. And, but until that veil's taken away, you don't see it. And that's why the gospel is preached to, to multitudes, and there's only a, a few that get saved out of the multitudes. 
because the majority of people don't understand what you know what this salvation thing in Jesus is all about. It just doesn't make sense to them, and so they cannot exercise their faith in it. Um, but once you do uh, understand, then you can exercise your faith in the gospel, and you're able to be saved. And that is why the doctrine, as I said, is called the doctrine of faith toward God. Because everybody on the planet does have faith, but not everybody is able to exercise faith toward God. And the only thing that blocks them from exercising their faith toward God is the fact that their minds have been blinded and they cannot see the light of the gospel. They cannot see the truth of the gospel. But once we come into the kingdom, well, just before you come into the kingdom, our eyes are enlightened. God opens our understanding. God allows us to, to understand the gospel, the truth of the gospel from the very first time. And when we do, the faith is there and we exercise our faith and we're born again. Um, and then that opens up a whole new door for us because now we can now begin to exercise faith toward God. Before we couldn't do that. We had faith, but we couldn't exercise faith toward God because I mean, as, as I went through earlier in the teaching, through, our whole, through all our lives, uh, our faith to, in God has been destroyed. Children have it. And up until an age where the, um, they're held accountable and, and they, die, they die spiritually at the age of 13, um, they can still exercise faith toward God. Um, but then it, the, that, that faith drops away completely almost. However, um, so why is it that the unbelievers could give, believe in Jesus to be healed but couldn't believe in Jesus to be saved? Well, it, 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 very simple because... When our Lord came to the earth, the, he, you know, he, uh, one of the messages he preached quite often is that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me uh, to preach the gospel, to heal the sick, to, uh, uh, to open blind eyes. And so he, he preached that. And that was one part of the gospel that everybody was able to see. Um, God allowed that particular part of the gospel to be made manifest to everyone. And so people could believe in Jesus as the healer, as a, a prophet anointed of God. Who I can go to him and if he lays hands on me, I will be healed. And so people could exercise their faith in him being used of God to heal. But they couldn't exercise their faith in believing in him as the, in him as the savior of the world because they didn't understand that. They couldn't get that into their minds. Um, but the fact that this, this, this prophet can, can lay hands on me and heal my body, that they could believe. But they couldn't believe that he was their savior. And so faith in the, in the natural can still be applied um, even amongst people who are what we would term in, in, in the scriptures as an unbeliever. They still have faith. Um, and they just don't have faith towards God. But when we come into, into the kingdom of God, then the doors open to us, and now we can start exercising our faith um, toward God, and that is the, the 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 starting point of the Christian walk. Is that you can now start applying your faith and start believing in the supernatural power of God, and that is what we're going to be discussing over the next series of teachings. Just how is it? And we're able to exercise our faith in God, because now we've got to learn this whole thing again, because. All through our lives, we've been taught not to have faith in God. Yeah, you know, there's just such, such thing as God, so we don't believe in Him, we don't believe in His power. But now we come into the kingdom of God, we see the truth of the gospel, we get born again. Now we have to be taught once again, as children, to now exercise faith in this Creator, this God who is the Almighty God, and in His power, and in the supernatural power of God. And uh, that is what uh, the doctrine of faith toward God is really all about. And we'll d discuss that and we'll look at it in more depth over the next uh, number of teachings in order to get a clearer understanding of that. But we're going to finish up the teaching on that particular point today. Amen.